just barely over 6,000 pounds. 6,030 pounds dry weight. A Rockwood 2703 coming back to us on trade here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. We sold this to its one and only original owner, so locally traded, serviced, etc. And in fantastic condition. If what you're looking for is a uh, spacious opposing slide living room in a more half-ton towable category, I think you might have just found one right here. And whoever owned this thing, they knew how to take care of a camper. I mean, whether it's inside or out, this has been well kept. It, I mean, it smells clean. You know, you can tell that they actively kept it clean. And they used it. They used it quite a bit. They just didn't beat it up. You know, there's, there's such a difference there. Just because you use an RV doesn't mean it has to show a lot of wear and tear. Some people are just very good at keeping tabs on their stuff, you know. Um, so the uh, idea here is to give us as much big, comfortable living space as we want in the, uh, the rear living area while keeping the RV uh, as short as reasonably possible given the, uh, the, the size of the living room while, uh, you know, keeping it towable, light as possible. I think Rockwood did a pretty good job of that. Now the focal point back here is obviously this rear entertainment center. Um, that can uh, The TV is on a gas strut system so that can kind of telescope up and down if you want to get that out of the way. You certainly can. And you see that little black button just down below on the right side of the TV? That's kind of like the, uh, the latch release there. Now we've got dual ducted central air so you can always keep quite a bit of good airflow going through this thing. Um, and every one of these air vents is both directional and uh, closable. The technical term there is louvered, but uh, most people don't, I, I didn't know what that meant before I was in the RV business in relation to an AC system. So, you know, I, I try not to sling technical jargon around because it's just kind of, it's kind of douchey. <laughs> anyway, big Udynet over here. You want to, you can absolutely have some family and friends over, play a game of cards, have a big family meal here. You can see that there is storage below both sides of that dinette, and the table's free floating. If you want to float the table around, it could be a bonus sleeper, it could do a lot of different things for you. And the sheer number of windows on the campsite of this RV is absolutely awesome. Like all the way around this slide, you've got breeze windows. Everywhere that you see a window, it will open for airflow. And that extra large window there around that Kind of pseudo pantry sort of arrangement they have there. Very cool. Lots in a lot of light and a lot of airflow. Good countertop prep space in this one as well. Uh, this is the the old Rockwood hickory wood tone. I like it. It had, it was um, really kind of rode that sort of neutral line between lighter and darker, but it really had a very natural sort of look and feel to me. I always really enjoy that. And you can see hardwood cabinet doors throughout the entire RV. And I kind of panned over it real quick. On the back side of the uh, peninsula here, you've got all sorts of cabinet space, drawers. I mean, there's a, the one thing about a peninsula like this is it actually gives you more storage space and prep space than an island really could because you, you're not losing the corner area over here, which makes it perfect for a coffee maker in that regard. Dual entry doors to the bedroom and bathroom makes for easy come and go, and naturally they're located right next to the entry door, so it cuts down on a lot of dirt and foot traffic through the RV. Doesn't look like they've even used this this year. It is still winterized. That common Rockwood extra large sink there, and as we scan our way up, you can see the bigger Max Air vent fan. And this is one of those things I like to look at to kind of see how much or how little an RV was used or maintained. Because I know they used it, but the fan is even clean. And that means that they dropped down this face panel, cleaned it, and then put it back up. So somebody obviously was willing to go to good effort to keep the RV in good working order. Uh, another quick note, right behind this door here, we've got some good floor-to-ceiling linen space. So you don't have to do that nudist camp streak through the RV in case you forget a towel. If you're a regular viewer of mine, then you know that this is the Flappy Doodle. Uh, that's the old 2000 series before Rockwood went to the 9000 series. But it does the same thing of making sure that entry door handle uh, to the bedroom doesn't smash against your nice laminated wall and scar and mark it up. Bedroom is pretty straightforward, but that front window lets in that extra flood of light, which unfortunately does not play very nicely with my camera. As you can see, I have to point away from it. Now over here you've got a normal hanging closet with a side stand, outlets are over there, CPAP friendly, phone chargers, etc. The wall across from the bedroom does have backers. If you wanted to mount a TV, you could do so. There's also an interesting storage arrangement under their bed, which is something Rockwood's done for years. You have like a storage chest and then a trio of dresser drawers. So everyone's got their own little kind of 
socks and underwear sort of space. And over here we've got a full length hanging closet with an extra large campsite viewing window that also opens for airflow. Once again, very good about excellent placement of windows on this floor plan. Starting in our pass throughout here, uh, it looks good. Like I don't see where they put like logs down here and there's not like, you know, wood shavings and dirt and bashed up stuff or anything. You can see the all aluminum rockwood skeleton. Now you're noticing a couple simple little wall panels kind of lightly in place there. If you look behind those, you see that's where the uh, the water filter would actually be located. Those are just mostly there as like cargo shields in case you do put something in that pass-through storage. They don't want the uh, cargo shifting around in case like let's say you had to hit the brakes in transit because some idiot pulls out in front of you. You know, they want to make sure that uh, those things don't get broken. That's all those are there for. Now as we saw in the uh, bedroom, you've got that front weather shield over that front window. And it's funny how it's like so many laminated brands in the last two years have adopted uh, a form of a front windshield. But all they're doing is catching up to what Rockwood's been doing for, what, decades? I mean, a lot of brands used to do this and then they just quit. Rockwood never did. Um, I think it's because of the fact that they're just engineered so well. They never had the front window leaks. But you notice how it also has that weather shield to help keep the wind buffeting and the, the air pressure exchange when you're... Like, when you get passed by a semi and that wind gust hits the front of the trailer, it is hard on that thing. It is hard on the trailer. That's part of the reason trailers actually have to be able to bend and wiggle a little bit. They have to be able to uh, absorb some of that, uh, you know, geometric stress. But the little shield on the front of it helps protect those window seals. Um, up front here we've got the larger 30 pound propane tanks for more time between refills. And you can see that power tongue jack making everything simple and easy, especially if you're getting hitched and unhitched from your weight distribution system or just simply leveling the camper. The uh, belly is enclosed. This is not a heated belly, however. That's one of those uh, interesting little Rockwood details over the years. More and more in the new modern market, you're finding the heated holding tanks, but it is just an enclosed belly. Um, the uh, tires here look absolutely fantastic. No weather checking, no regular wear patterns. Aluminum wheels still looking good. I mean, the whole RV really looks great, absolutely. But the uh, thing I want to point out there is what you don't see, and that is their suspension system. Uh, Rockwood for years has used a uh, torsion axle and suspension system. It's a four-wheel independent suspension. So what that means is that when you're whipping around a corner at high speed, like those, you know, those really make you a seasick curly Q uh, highway exits, the trailer won't want to body roll. It will stay flatter so that you are more stable on the, uh, on the road. Now, this is an all-aluminum skeleton, uh, basically, Pretty much the entire thing is laminated, including those slide sidewalls to help keep the weight down there. Now, as we pass through here, even in this little shaded sort of corridor between these two trailers, look at the shine and the gleam and the reflectivity still existing on the skin here. This has been amazingly well kept. Also, as we rip around uh, next to the door, we've got a wider door a larger entry handle, and over here, under the power awning, you have outside TV hookups and a grilling station, should you choose to add a couple accessories to the outside of your RV to really trick her out. And this fully walkable laminated roof here looks great. This has obviously been regularly cleaned, maintained. All the original factory sills are still here and viable, however, I have noticed like you can start to see some weathering around here. The RV is at the point where uh, it would be advisable, especially before winter, like it's fine right now. But before it's put away in the winter, what you'll wanna do is get a tube of self-leveling sealant like Dicor or something like that. There's a bunch of different stuff. We have them on the shelf here. We can give you more details if you need. But um, you wanna do a little touch-up bead around those little weathered areas because the majority of the seal is still fine. You can get away with doing that once, uh, maybe twice, but you don't want to put uh, dual layers of sealant over top of one another, uh, other than just the initial touch-up bead. So, she looks good right now, but it's a couple years old, so it makes sense that it's starting to approach a, a routine maintenance sort of um, cycle in its lifespan, then you'll go another three, four, five years, and then you'll have to do it again, and etc. But that's normal, you know, it's like, you don't have to uh, do a transmission flush on your vehicle every other day, but periodically we are all of the understanding that, yeah, eventually that vehicle's going to need some maintenance, whether it's an oil change or something more involved, you know. But this RV doesn't need anything major. Like I said, it, I don't think it needs anything right now. 
I just think it would be advisable before winter to do a couple touch-up beads. And actually, I can see where the previous owner had done a very small touch-up bead back there, so they were obviously paying attention to that. Um, they just wanted something smaller, and actually, that's what's crazy. You might ask a question like, why is this nice camper here? Well, they, uh, you see that little thing right there, that's their trailer. They just wanted something smaller that they could tote around more easily. And instead of park camping, they're like, we're gonna hit the road. We're gonna, you know, live the mobile RV life. So there's their new trailer going out back to get, uh, actually they're probably gonna go through their uh, factory or their uh, their instructional tour that we put together for people here at Haylet RV. So whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, obviously trades, package deals and everything in between, we do it all at Haylet RV, new used, consignments, etc. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.